In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To a small, quiet village in the backwaters of the Roman Empire, to a small band of shepherds tending their flocks, as they had for years, and as others had done before them for centuries, to a time far away and in a place we can only think of in romantic, unreal ways, came an event that changed not only that time and that place, but all of time and every place. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. To calm those who are frightened by the idea of God's drawing closer to touch our human lives, and to prepare us to welcome so wondrous a gift as Emmanuel, God with us. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. To infuse our hearts with joy and to open us to receive the grace that God showers in our lives. And the angels said to them, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. To give direction to those who have lost their way and wandered far from God. And the angel said to them, And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. To herald the good news that God has entered human history and to celebrate the beginning of God's actions to bring all people into fellowship with him and with one another. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and to us this night the angels come again to bring us their message of hope, love, peace, and joy. God has opened his heart through Christ. May our hearts also be opened that we may rightfully glorify and bless his holy name. He has a nice voice in the ministry. We got the angels from the worlds of glory. Bring your voice for all the earth. You sang creation's glory. Now the wind and the spires burn. Come and worship, come and worship. I shall praise the Lord, King. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make this most holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that as we have known the mysteries of that light on earth, we may also come to the fullness of his joys in heaven through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Children are invited to come forward for our Christmas Eve children's message. Come on up, children. Surely we're going to have some children back there. Any of you want to come? A few of you? All of you? I've got something special here. <laughs> Any other children? Don't be bashful. I bet you won't be bashful later tonight or in the morning, huh? There's a couple. Okay. Well, welcome. And one of the special things about Christmas is what? Presents. Yeah, presents. And um, usually presents are wrapped in pretty bows and that kind of thing. But sometimes, let's say that you're at a, here comes another one. Good. Come on up. Let's say that you're at a Christmas party or a family gathering. And sometimes we have those. And everybody brings a present. There's even a game you can play, White Elephant Gifts. You know what that is? And so then you can go up to the pile of presents and pick one. And let's say it's between these two presents. Which one would you be more likely to pick, do you think? Which one looks more inviting? You think that one? I'm sure you would say that. You like the bright one, uh huh? And often that's what we look at. Uh, the wrapping and, and the colorful bow and so forth, but uh, she maybe is a little smarter than them. <laughs> so let's say you pick this one just because it's, uh, it's a beautiful color and has a bow on it. You know, this one is actually wrapped with what? Newspaper of all things. And so we look at this one and you pick this one and what do you get? Uh, well, isn't that what you've been wishing for all year, for socks? Okay. And so, enough. so then she, I think she's smarter, and oh, takes this one with just newspaper wrapping, and when you open it, it's a pretty plain box, and you open it, oh, then it's got some wrapping paper in it, and what is in here? And you know what? It's actually a music box, Angel. Come on. <laughs> What's it playing? Silent Night, yeah. So what am I trying to teach you by this? Well, Maybe you've heard the story, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't maybe judge a gift by the wrapping it's in, right? And sometimes the big gifts that are beautifully wrapped maybe aren't as spe special as a smaller gift in plain wrapping or vice versa. And what I want to talk about there real briefly is Jesus is our most special gift that we're celebrating tonight. Did Jesus come in beautiful wrapping when he came down to earth? He's a king. He's the king they were waiting for. So a king should be born where? In a palace, right? And what might they wrap a king in? What kind of cloth? Can you think of kinds of soft cloth that a king might, maybe king might get wrapped in? How about velvet or silk and so forth? What, what, but Jesus was born not into a palace, but where was he born? In a barn, exactly, in a, in a stable, and placed instead of a soft bed like you probably have at home, in a manger. That's not very good wrapping, is it? That's more like that gift came like this. And that's not what we would expect. And yet, the gift that came in that rough wrapping in a manger and he was wrapped not in silk and velvet, but in swaddling 
cloths or clothes, strips of just cloth, maybe almost like rags, and he was wrapped with that. And yet, and yet, he was the most precious gift that the world could ever want. And he still comes to us. He's coming us to us tonight. He's here tonight. He comes to us through people like me, through pastors who will read God's word. And to a lot of the world, that seems more like this. Well, what's so great about that? They're looking for something really snazzy and splendorous and so forth. And yet that word of God that we're going to hear tonight is beautiful and it's powerful. And Jesus is still the greatest gift of all. So let's remember that some of the most special gifts, not so much what this is about tonight with presents, but the most special gifts sometimes come in pretty plain wrappings. At least that's what it looks like to us and much of the world. And yet those gifts can be the most special and especially the gift we celebrate tonight, the gift of Jesus. Merry Christmas to you, and thank you, and I hope you get something more than socks, okay? You should have seen his face. <laughs> okay, thank you, and you may return with your families to continue to worship. The Old Testament reading for this Christmas Eve comes from the prophet Isaiah, the seventh chapter. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you should weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from the first letter of St. John, the fourth chapter. Beloved, let us love one another for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let's rise for the reading of the Christmas Gospel. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the second chapter, Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Thus far, the reading of the Christmas Gospel, you may be seated. Please rise for the continuation of the Christmas Gospel. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen 
as it had been told them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Joy to you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who's coming among us over 2,000 years ago, which has been celebrated down to the ages. We come once again this Christmas Eve to celebrate here in this place. Yes, that old adage, never judge a book by its cover. And that can apply literally to already when we were children, we might have often grabbed for the book that had the most colorful cover, but then sometimes it's that drab co covered book that really has a gem of a story, and that applies to so many other th aspects of life. Never judge a book by its cover. And so tonight it can also be applied to, as I already introduced uh, with the children's message, never judge a gift by its wrapping, and we want to expand that a little bit further. Those of us that hmm, maybe have less years ahead of us than behind us, so depending on how long you expect to live, but many of us, and maybe even some of the younger folk, have seen that the celebration of Christmas in our country, and our culture, uh, even in our world, has, has evolved uh, over the last, say, 50 years uh, to a much more um, splendorous and, and uh, uh, tradition and richness enhanced celebration. Um, we, in some ways, try to replicate, replicate, they tell us, a Victorian Christmas 
Uh, this morning I just saw an article on CBS News where they, some of that actually started with Charles Dickinson's, uh, Dickens' A Christmas Carol. And at that time, Christmas was not observed anything, and the people were very poor and very much impoverished and uh, uh, beaten down uh, by life's troubles and woes. And we have increased that even in, in again, in, in our lifetimes for many of us. When I look back at um, a much simpler Christmas of my, my boyhood years, uh, growing up on a farm about 150 miles to the northwest of here, right up against the Nebraska border. And I know some of you are gonna be able to relate to some of this. So you younger people, uh, bear with just a little bit of, of old time storytelling, but it probably wasn't until the fourth Sunday in Advent, and then we would go out to uh, a pasture and look for the ideal, uh, not scotch pine, not some spruce tree, but uh, an old cedar tree. Those are still the best, right? Look for that ideal cedar tree, not like Chevy Chase going out and looking for that ultimate tree. But we'd bring the cedar tree in and maybe not decorate it till the fourth Sunday. And in the house, there wasn't a lot more decorations, but we learned in school to make these red and green out of construction paper uh, chain links. And we would sometimes put those through the dining room or living room in sat in, in SAG uh, kind of uh, formation. And uh, so Christmas was a lot simpler, and yet the gifts were there. And for us, uh, the gifts, well, we'd go off to the country church two miles north of our farm place. And um, it was while we were doing our children's Christmas program that Santa would visit. And when we came home, wow, there it was. It wasn't until some years later we realized that mom usually came out last as we were getting in the car to go to church or she had to run back in because she forgot something. Uh, maybe that had something to do with it. But here's the point I want to make with this, this uh, um, about never judge a, a gift by its wrapping. In my earlier years, my mom was raising at that time already eight children. Um, the three older than me and four younger than me with one more to come in the early 1960s. And so we would come home and no, we didn't find gaily, perfectly wrapped presents under the Christmas tree. There may have been some, but you know what was there? Paper sacks, numerous paper sacks, the same brown paper sacks that they had bought the gifts from the store because she didn't have the time or the energy and maybe even not always the money to wrap them the way everything has to be wrapped so perfectly today. Now, do you think that diminished in any way our excitement? No, or did it diminish the value of what we received, whether it was a, a play, you know, back in the Cowboys and Indian days, play holster and, and, and gun, you know, and for the girls, dollies and whatever it be. No, it didn't diminish it one bit. Well, as we children grew older and, and then we started exchanging gifts among us, yes, then the gifts started being wrapped too. And in that way, Christmas at our house evolved into something a little bit more, um, more special and, and beautiful in that way. But again, going back to that, never judge a gift by its wrapping. Tonight on Christmas Eve, we are reminded of a similar lesson. Indeed, the message of Christmas, yes, is the greatest gift of all, the gift of God's own son that was delivered in modest, unassuming wrapping. St. Luke describes this humble happening in this way. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Wow, that's it? The most precious gift of all, God himself, was packaged in the flesh of a, a vulnerable little infant. What's more, he was born of peasant parents Joseph and Mary were nobody to speak of. He was wrapped literally in rags, laid in a feed trough for livestock because the local motel, not even Motel 6, could accommodate this little family in their time of need. 
Instead of being welcomed by kings and princes, he was greeted by shepherds who were regarded as lowly and unclean in that culture, even as outcasts from society. So it was an angel, an angel who was sent to unwrap the identity of this child and to reveal the true nature of this gift. The angel said, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior, a savior who is Christ the Lord. The angel makes it <clears throat> unmistakably clear who this child is. He is none other than the Christ. That's huge. The Messiah promised of old that they've been waiting centuries for. He is the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the Savior, the one anticipated since the time of Adam. He is God in human flesh, the greatest gift in all history. And we continue to celebrate his coming among us, yes, even 2,000 years later. One would expect to find this person in a palace, gift wrapped with garments of silk and presented in a cradle gilded with gold. But that's not what happened. Notice how the angel has to clarify the signs, including identifying the baby's location. It would be, the angel said, in the city of David, the little town, hamlet, you might say, of Bethlehem, not in the capital city, the religious center of Jerusalem. He would be lying in a manger located where animals lodge, not in a velvet lined crib in a royal nursery, but wrapped in common cloth, not in the furs of kings and princes. Why such treasure in such humble wrapping? First, the reason this most precious gift of all is delivered in such lowly packaging or wrapping is because that packaging itself communicates something about the gift. The wrappings are indeed important. The old adage true, holds true, the medium is the message. What this means is that how you communicate defines what is communicated. And here, God communicates something highly significant by packaging his son as a weak infant born of poor parents in humble surroundings and welcomed by who? Society's outcast. It means that this one who is born in such low estate has come for the lowly, the humble, the outcast, and the poor in spirit. The most significant of all the wrappings of this gift is that it is of human flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's what we'll hear tomorrow morning, that beautiful uh, rendering of Christmas from, from the Gospel of St. John. He became flesh. This shows that above all, he has come for people with flesh, for humans, for human beings. He is born for the likes of these fleshly human beings who include babies, children, women, and men every one of us here tonight. In human flesh, he identifies with and substitutes for human beings. And not just that, but he substitutes for sinful human beings. He who is without sin identifies himself with us for all humanity, all of us who are poor, unclean peasants, before a holy and just God. What's most amazing of all, however, is that this human being, who is also God, would later in his life be wrapped in a crown of thorns and attached to a cross with nails. He would be wrapped with our sin and the uncleanness of our iniquities. He would then be wrapped in grave cloths, 
and laid in a tomb. He would be wrapped with our death, having borne the consequences of all of our sins. Also that he might wrap us with his righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. That's the great exchange of Christmas, of Christ. He takes and wraps himself with our sins so that we can instead be wrapped in his righteousness. So, wrappings are important. Indeed, these wrappings around the gift of Jesus are eminently significant. For they reveal to us much about Christ's mission to save us. His humble entry into the world as one of us marks him as the one whom the angel declared to be mankind's savior. He was the one born to save his people from their sin. Yes, the wrappings are important. Yet, as with any gift, you'll want to get beyond the wrappings. You know, when you wrap, unwrap presents tonight or tomorrow, you won't be enamored with the wrappings. Oh, they might, again, give extra beauty to the gift as it sits there under the tree and as it's presented to you. But you ultimately focus what's inside the wrapping, the gift. So also tonight, we don't become enamored with the wrappings of the swaddling clothes or cloths or of the, the shepherds and their bleeding sheep or the donkey that's sitting by the side having brought them to Bethlehem or the wise men for that matter. We don't become merely nostalgic about the cute or even tender little baby, uh, although that's certainly appropriate as we sing away in the manger and so forth. But because if in our Christmas celebration, Jesus isn't unwrapped at some point to reveal the eternal deity incarnated in human flesh, then he is only a cute infant who decorates our holiday. But we do see beneath the wrappings. We behold the revelation of the one who is true God and true man, true human. The prophet foretold that he would be the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace. The angel announced that he is none other, other than Christ the Lord. Approximately 33 years after his birth, yes, Jesus was wrapped not in swaddling cloths this time, but in grave cloths. But on the third day, the cloths were loosened and he was unwrapped for us to see now in his, in his glory, see him as the resurrected Lord. Furthermore, on the last day, he will be unwrapped for every eye to see in his full glory as the King of kings and Lord of lords. So tonight, we will sing with the hymn writer on our very last hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, these words. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. Think of those words. Veiled in flesh, flesh like yours and mine, the Godhead see. Hail the incarnate. Incarnate means that he became man, but the incarnate deity, man and yet God. Yes, you cannot judge a gift by its wrappings, certainly not this one. For this newborn baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger is no other than the almighty and eternal God who comes to dwell among us. That's what Emmanuel, one of his names means. That's the name of this church, God with us. What's more, God continues to deliver his most precious gifts in unexpected and simple wrappings. The gift of eternal life is delivered in the package of ordinary water in holy baptism. Christ's true presence, his body and blood, is given to eat and drink in ordinary bread and wine, as will take place tomorrow morning and again on Sunday. And God's powerful word, the life-giving and sin-forgiving gospel is delivered through the humble mouths of sinners, like the pastor who leads you 
in worship tonight. Even now, God delivers the heavenly, his heavenly treasures through humble earthly means, which much of the world is not impressed by, but those of us who know him, we know that is the greatest gift of all. A young man was deeply in love with a young woman, so he gave her several gifts that Christmas. Most of these gifts were packaged in beautiful wrappings. These his sweetheart opened first since they were the most attractive to her. She left the smallest, most modest for last. It was so insignificant compared to the others, wrapped with newspaper and tied with twine. But when she unwrapped it, and there is no surprise ending here, it's as predictable as a Hallmark movie, Sorry about that, Hallmark fans. But when she unwrapped that simplest gift, guess what was inside? A diamond ring. A diamond engagement ring. And here's now the significance of this. The humblest looking gift was the one that changed her life forever. And now to apply it to the gift we're here for tonight. Tonight, let us unwrap this gift that is in the humblest packaging and wrapping, a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger, and know that through that gift, our lives are eternally changed. Amen. Our confession this, of faith this evening uh, takes the form of Martin Luther's meaning of the second article of the Apostles' Creed as printed there. Please rise. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me a lost and condemned priest purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence and blessings, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. Our worship continues with our Christmas Eve offerings.
Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Merciful and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for your great love with which you have visited us in the person of your son Jesus, son of Mary, our savior from sin and death. As your church proclaims joy to the world at the coming of the savior, may every heart be filled with faith, comfort and joy to receive him. Lord, in your mercy, grant to your whole church the pure light of your saving word and inspire all who are called to preach and teach your word to do so with joy and complete faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy, as this world still sits in the darkness of sin and the shadow of death, Make the light of Christ to shine brightly in every corner that many may be drawn to your salvation and gift of life. Lord, in your mercy, hold the governing authorities of our land and of every nation in your strong arms, directing them in ways of justice and mercy that provide for the greater liberty and freedom of all people all over the world. Lord, in your mercy, Visit, heal, and relieve all who are lonely, homebound, hospitalized, or recuperating from illness. We especially remember and pray healing for, for Marvin of this congregation and others of this congregation and those that we now name in our hearts. Assure them of your gracious presence and grant them peace. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we command all for who we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Please remain standing for the candlelighting portion of the service. And as the <clears throat> ushers come with the candle to the end of each row, the person you with the unlit candle are the ones to tip your candle um, so that the candle that's burning uh, doesn't drop wax. And then we will remain standing with the candles lit uh, through the blessing, at which time they will be extinguished. We'll wait until all the candles are lit before we start singing. She'll let us know, okay?
You have sung the Gloria, now show Christ glory. You have seen the gift, now share it. You have been blessed to walk this night in the presence of angels. Let your joy show forth and let your thanks sound forth. The Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you. Amen. Oh. 